When we make decisions, especially when others can be affected by the outcome, it's important to recognize the difference between good and bad choices. Deciding on something is easy, but making a good or a best decision requires a bit more thought and input. There are four common methods you can follow to make decisions based on the circumstances and options available to you. They are the command, consult, vote and consensus methods. Let's discuss each method in a little bit more detail. In the command method, one person makes a decision without the input of others. It can either be due to demands placed from outside forces or we make decisions and delegate tasks. It's a major part of authoritative leadership and often results in fast solutions. They are most commonly made by managers or people in leadership positions and also come with high risk. The consult method requires input from others, but the final decision is made on your own. As a leader or decision maker, you invite those that could be affected by the outcome to influence you. These can be colleagues, experts or everyone who wants to offer an opinion. The decision making process may not be as fast as the command decision making method, but it ensures others feel included during the decision making process and that their voices and opinions are considered. The vote method is used when efficiency is the highest value and you need to make a decision based on the good options available. The group will freely discuss the topic openly before the speaker will call for a vote. The group will either vote for or against it, making it a democratic and fair process. Voting is also a finite solution that creates a fair and effective decision-making process. It's important to remember to only use the vote method if everyone agrees to support whatever decision is made. When team members cannot agree on possible outcomes, the consensus method is required. The consensus method requires group decision-making and suggesting with alternative solutions. The group will discuss all ideas until they reach an agreement. It can easily be very time-consuming and, if misapplied, it may take multiple meetings to conclude. This method can result in high-quality decisions, but has two requirements. Only use the consensus method on high-stakes or complex issues, or use the consensus method on issues where everyone needs to absolutely support the final choice. Now that you're familiar with the different decision-making methods, let's look at how to recognize which method is most appropriate for your scenario. There are four questions you can ask to determine the level of input required from others. Depending on the outcome of this, you'll be able to clearly decide on a method for the scenario. Firstly, who cares? Who genuinely wants to be involved in the decision-making process, as well as those that will be affected by the outcome? It's best not to involve anyone who doesn't care. The next question is, who knows? Encourage those with expertise on the matter to join the decision-making process. And thirdly, who needs to agree? Consider whose cooperation you need. This could be your manager, employer or board of directors. Notify them on the decision you want to take prior to an open discussion. It's best to plan rather than surprise. You might face some unwanted resistance from them. Then the last question is, how many people is it worth involving? The objective is to involve as little people as possible while keeping the quality of the decision in mind as well as the support of the people who it might affect. Consider whether you have enough people to make a good decision and whether others will need to be involved in order to receive their commitment to the decision.